of it, of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Chapter 5. Chapter 5, 22 through 25. While you're turning there, I'm really looking forward to our Bible study tonight. <clears throat> I can't wait. Uh, how to study your Bible. Uh, session 1. Amen. Hermeneutics is another word for it. Amen. Learning how to study your Bible. You're going to learn not how to read your Bible. How to study your Bible. Not form an opinion about the Bible. But have to study the Bible for what it really is, not what you think it is. Because believe it or not, it doesn't matter what we think. Mm -hmm. Amen. It matters. It matters what it says. But the fruit of the Spirit, capital S, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Aaron, if you would go back to verse 22, please. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. We're going to stop right there. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. We would like to preach on this subject this morning, the fruit of love. The fruit of of love. Father, let your word be a lamp to our feet and light to our path. Anoint this vessel of clay, anoint these clay lips. Let me speak as a prophet, as an oracle, <clears throat> your mouthpiece, your vehicle from the throne of God, the heart of God, even if possible, to the hearts of the saints and the remnant, the people, the bride that is here today. Once again, let this word into eat, let my tongue with ever ready writer. That I might write and stain the word of God from the table of their heart that it might not sin against God all the days of their life. Give wisdom to my ignorance. Help me have understanding with wisdom. For wisdom standeth in the streets and on street corner and crieth unto the simple and unwise. So help us learn of you today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Now, we've heard us preach some of these things here before, but we need, we need to be a church of love. You have to love. If you can't love, if you can't produce love, then number one, you might not be saved. Number two, you're in bondage to something. And because it is a natural and supernatural response when you get saved 
to have love in your heart. Because God is love. God cannot be separated from love. Somebody give God some praise there. Too. The most effective church is not the denomination of the church. Believe it or not, the church of God does not have a monopoly on church. Believe it or not, the assemblies of God does not have a monopoly on the church. The Pentecostal Holiness, Smithfield Pentecostal Church, you fill in the blank, Southern Baptists, Methodists, Lutherans. That does not make an effective church. I don't have anything against denominations. I came from a denomination, and basically we are a denomination. This is a denomination for me. <laughs> We said it before, but the most powerful church is not the church, but the most fire. Now that just blew you Pentecostals away. You Pentecostals, y'all can't, y'all can't fathom that. That just blew y'all away. The most powerful church is not the church that operates in all the gifts. It's not the size of the church that makes it powerful, even. It's not the wealth of the church or the, the beautification of the church. The most powerful church is the church that has the most love. Amen. That's the most powerful church. You get love and the fire will come. Fill the house with love and the gifts will come. Believe it or not, if you fill the house with love, God's wealth will come. Can I get a witness there? <laughs> well, I got a message burning me up about tithing. Not, not condemning you if you don't tithe, but the, 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 the consequences of tithing. Whew. Boy, I tell you. Thanks so much. Just when I get a draw back on this. Every true revival I've ever been a part of comes when people get down in their faces before God, repent first, call upon the Lord, turn from their wicked ways, and you make peace with each other, and you begin to love each other. You put aside petty differences. And when the love of God begins to flow, that is the first drop of water that bursts the dam of revival. Mm -hmm. Love is the spearhead, the point of the spear, the point of the sword in the Christian faith that releases the fire and revival and gifts. How can we expect gifts and fire and power and wealth and, and the beautification of the church and all these things that come to pass if the Holy Spirit is tied up trying to make you not mad with him, her not mad with her, him not mad with him. Can I get a witness? Amen. You might run, you might shout, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're running your shout of fake if you ain't got love. Come on, somebody. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is love, not the spirit of dissension. Not the spirit of division. Not the spirit of people worried about everything looks like. I'm going to tell you right now, love will cover all that mess up. Come on, somebody, one more time. <laughs> show me a church where love is absent, I will show you a church that is apt to the fire, gifts, power. <laughs> show me a church that is void of love, and I will show you a church that is mechanized. Come in, raise hands when you're supposed to, clap when you're supposed to, sing when you're supposed to, go home and no change. You leave, you don't get fed. It just makes you feel good that you went to church because, by the way, we are in the South. That's the thing you do on Sundays, right? Is go to church. I'm going to tell you right now, but love makes the atmosphere warm and charged. Yeah. Love makes us look past people when they come in with tattoos and shorts and they don't look like you, they don't smell like you, they don't act. Like you. Never reject somebody that comes into this church that don't look like you, that ain't the same color as you, that don't smell like you, don't look like you, don't have the same income, because if you do, when they leave, me and you will have a serious problem. Come on, somebody. This ain't going to be popular with you. When you have love, when somebody comes in here and sits in your seat, you ain't going to get all jacked up. If we have a bunch of visitors, some of y'all start throwing your Bibles over there. You don't even try to get over there. You just throw it over there. Huh? Don't she see that's my blanket I put there? Huh? You look nasty, sir. You better get saved. What's the matter with you? Without love, 
the church is just a club or a social gathering. Come on, somebody mm -hmm. say amen. Mm -hmm. I know we've said this here before, but it bears repeating. If you make the fruit of the Spirit, especially the fruit of love, a priority in your church life or ministry, God will make the gift of the Spirit a priority for Him to you. If you will make loving each other, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, you can't have gift without fruit. Amen. Amen. It's not going to happen. You can't have fire if you don't have peace and long suffering and gentleness and goodness and meekness and faith and all of these things. You make love a priority. You make the fruit of the Spirit a priority. And God will make the gifts of fruit in our churches a priority. If you're a pastor and you're listening to evangelists and listening to your church is going through a hard time, if you will, if you will get out the towel in the water basin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you will break out the, 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 the towel and the water basin and get your people to wash each other's feet, love each other, you will have peace in your church again. The ones that leave, let them leave because they're the ones keeping the love out of your church. Let them go. Come on, come on. Let them go. I've learned that the hard way. I have learned to let toxic people go and the people that want to be in love with each other and the people that really care about each other, we will remain and we will continue to love and we will continue to forbear one another and love each other. Come on, somebody. Produce love. You hear me? A tree always produces from its roots. Whatever the tree is rooted in. I planted Shannon a butterfly and dragonfly garden. It's got butterfly bushes, two or three different kind of lantanas. And I said, I know that this ground is real, real sandy. Now, I don't want to have a lot of nutrients in it, so I bought a big old one of them compressed bales that's got peat moss in it, fertilizer, it's got all kinds. Of, and I tilled it into the dirt. And why did I do that? That thing got wild and full of it. That thing was fruitful. That thing was fruitful. That, fruit, that thing was fruitful and multiplied. I'm in the tank. I couldn't even keep it proof to keep it in shape. I just, I just enjoyed all the butterflies and the dragonflies. My backyard full of dragonflies. But it's not possible without healthy roots. When your root is in the spirit, the spirit is fertile. And it will produce these fruits, fruits through you. Come on, somebody. The spirit is fertile and oozing with love like a honeycomb. Oozing healing over the broken. Let me say, when you get love in your heart, you will care about your neighbor. When your neighbor's hungry, you will feed them. When your neighbor's hurt, you will go to them. Come on, somebody. When you're authentic, produce, Christian, produce love. Aaron, give me John 13, 34, 35. Watch what Jesus says here. A new commandment. What's that mean? The commandment I'm about to give you is not like the law. In the law, you slap me, I'm going to slap you back. Some of y'all still up under the law. <laughs> I heard Brother Donnie tell a man one time, he was saying, what do you do if I hold off a slap? That would not be in my mind. Just like Brother Donnie, I don't know if y'all know my pastor or not. That's not smart. I was with him 10 years. He said, if you slap me because I love the Lord, I'll take that slap. He said, but if you slap me because you're full of the devil, I don't know. He said, I don't know. Jesus saying, a new commandment I give unto you. It's no longer I for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You ran on my dog 20 years ago and trying to run over your cat every day. <laughs> it's no longer I for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. A new commandment, a better commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. You that, that ye also love one another. What if God loved you like you loved other people? What if God treated you like you treat your neighbor? What if God treated you like you treat your co-worker? What if every time you said something, God in heaven went, 
like some of y'all do. Yeah, I, when that girl walks in the office, I can see some of y'all now. <laughs> well. Huh? Well. You might go do it outwardly, yeah. but inside you're going, shh. I've seen some of y'all do church people that way. No, nobody don't see, but the preacher's very observant. When it's she walks in the church, her hair is better than your hair. Or her nails are better than your nails. Or you even get a hit, and she might even look at you. Uh. <laughs> what, what, if, what if God treated you like you treat other people? What if God talked to you like you talked to other people? Jesus said, this is what I'm trying to tell you. A new commandment I'm getting unto you that you should, that you love one another. This is not asking you to do this. This is a command. Go to 35. Watch this. By this shall all men know you that you are my disciples if you have one, one for another. What if I went to your neighborhood? Let me get you. If I come down, I'm good for at least an hour. You sure? <laughs> what if I went through your neighborhood? I said this before on Wednesday night. We still have service on Wednesday night around here. What if the Lord walked to each one of y'all door of your preacher and said, How about your neighbor that lives in that address right there? Have that neighbor right there. <laughs> well, that's Ronnie. I'm trying to say, by this all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So you cannot divorce love as a Christian. You can't do it. You're known if you have love. You're known if you serve. Servanthood is birthed out of love. Did you realize everything about your life and everything who God is is birthed out of love? You've heard me say it a trillion times since I've been here. Were you, were you created for worship? Yeah, you were created for worship, but you, does God have to have your worship? God, I always tell you, God's all happy all by himself. But what, do, what do you think? Because you withhold your worship of God, God is going to shrivel up and go away with the man with you. That's, that's, that's poor theology. That's bad theology. God is going to be God whether you love him or not. Can I get a witness? Aaron, give me 1 John 3.14. We're moving along, ain't Aaron? Aaron said, you ain't got too many more to go. 1 John. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we have love for the brethren. People know that you are saved because you have love. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. I didn't write that. I mean, that, bro, that's, that's a tough scripture. If you don't love, the Bible says you abide in death. Does that, does that mean I, I have to love everybody? Well, yeah, we have to try to try to love everybody. That don't mean I want to hang out with everybody now. I got, I got, I got constituents that are very unique. Let's just put it that way. Very, very unique. If they're hungry, I'll bring food to them. If they need clothes, I'll go buy them some clothes if I can. <laughs> If they had an electrical emergency and they ain't got no money, I'll go to their house and I'll do electrical work for them. But I ain't, I ain't have more than him. Right. You see what I'm trying to say? I can love him because the Lord loved me first. I can love him through the grace of God. But that don't mean we got to go fishing together. I don't know if I want to go fishing. I don't know if I want to be in the boat with him all day. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, you, you might chive with that person. But to hate. That's such a strong and powerful word. We don't like to use that word here. Somebody give God some praise. Don't use that word. It's okay. So we, we might disdain that person. And I've used this illustration here too before. How many of you ever heard of the Sousa Street Revival? A Sousa Street Revival. Some of you have it. So briefly, I'm going to, I'm going to explain it to you. William Seymour, African American evangelist, got baptized with the Holy Ghost. Spoke in tongues. And he opened up a little church in a horse stable on Azusa Street in California. Some of it was Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken. And the 
power revival broke out in the horse table. They, they, they made it into a church. And they had church day and night. Some of us had a heart attack right there. They had church day and night for five years. If you went to that church at 3 o'clock in the morning, somebody was preaching. And somebody was being filled with the Holy Ghost. People were, this, this, this is the late 1800s now, early 1900s. People were getting on ships and sailing from Norway. And England and France and Israel to go to a church in a horse table. <laughs> it don't matter about the size of the church or what the church looks like. You get so caught up, some of you, on cosmetics. Now, don't get me wrong now. That's part of our mission statement. Like, we're going to beautify our church. One of our deacons mentioned that. In this mission statement, we talk about excellence. It should, it should include. God's house. Somebody did because somebody did God for sure. But don't get so caught up in that that you can't see the beauty of the Lord. If you went to this church at 5 o'clock in the morning, somebody was preaching, somebody was speaking in tongues, somebody was prophesying, somebody was filled with the Spirit, and all of a sudden you died. Why? They forgot love. They started bickering. They started arguing. On the length of hair. They started arguing about the length of sleeves. The Lord told me I can't have a mustache no more. So you can't have a mustache either. Wait a minute. The Lord didn't tell me that. Well you talking about draw an eye. This preacher. You started getting on that pet. I told a man one time. So I said so God's going to send me to hell if I grow my mustache. But gave me the ability to grow hair. I don't know about that. God's going to send me to hell because I grow a beard, but he gave, he gave me the ability to grow a beard. I told one, I told one preacher one time, I said, have you ever read the Bible where they pluck the... So I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know. I try not to get off of all that. The revival ended abruptly because just a group of people got how to love each other. You listen to this preacher. You love each other. This ain't going to just might not fly over good, but I'm your preacher. I can say this. Some of you need to quit loving your own and love everybody else. Can I get a witness? Amen. Don't just love your spear. Love it. Now we, all, we, we drop the ball sometimes. We don't mean to, right? Right. If you get excluded sometimes, we, well, I promise we didn't have a leadership meeting and say, hey, hey, um, I'm going to pick up somebody mature. Let's, uh, let's, let's pick up John. John had a little something going on, so we're, just, we're not going to bring her food. We're just going to exclude her. But the next person would hit that's how That's how fires in churches get put out. Come on, somebody. <laughs> okay, John, John, don't believe that, do you, John? I'm going to. I'll bring you a can of sorry if you want. <laughs> <laughs> JW ain't here, so I'm going to throw him under the bus. We went crappy fishing one day. You went crappy fishing one day. Remember the bike in your boat, and I'll go in your boat. <laughs> Trust me. We'll use your gas. And I'll even use all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use up all your wine. <laughs> Ronnie, <laughs> if you're hungry, man, just so there's some snacks up under your seat. I opened it up, and it was a can of pipe hot vines. I said, Oh, I don't know. It's still good. <laughs> he turned around and looked at his face. <laughs> you all right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me quit. Let me pick this up. You just want to get on down. This is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit helps us produce love that was first birthed in heaven. If you claim to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're going to have love. You will not be mean and cantankerous. I don't care what your theology is or where you was raised or what kind of church you was in. If you truly baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're not going to be mean and sharp. I know a woman one time I was part of a church and she was putting up Christmas lights and somebody said, you missed a little area right here and she cussed that your girl but yet on Sunday morning she wants to speak in tongues. Why do we do stuff like that? Why do 
I can do stuff like that. <coughs> can I say it? Here comes it. Go ahead. I don't understand why Pentecostals speak in tongues and cuss in English. Come on. <laughs> How you gonna speak in tongues and lie in English? Come on, brother. Amen. How you gonna speak in tongues and ain't got no love? You liar. Amen. Amen. claim you filled with the Holy Ghost, if you claim that you've been filled with God's Holy Spirit and God is a piece of love and the fruit of the Spirit is love and you ain't got no love, the Bible said you abide in death. You better watch out. You skating on thin ice. Somebody say amen, amen anyway. Amen. Amen. You love Trinity love. If you, if you jot down notes, jot that down. Trinitarian love. That's a big word, isn't it? The Father's love, this is Trinitarian love. You ready? I need you to love with a Trinitarian love. The Father's love is caring and corrective. The Son is sacrificial, giving His life to display the love of the Father. Jesus is God in the flesh. Let me put you this way. Jesus is love in the flesh. What do you think about that, Reverend? Is that good theology? Is that good theology? I think it is. <clears throat> Jesus was love wrapped up in flesh. And the Holy Spirit is the bond of love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, what does the Holy Spirit do? He flows from Father and Son like a river. So when the river flows through you, you should have the attributes of Caring and corrective, sacrificial, and serving, right? Amen. And you should have the bond of love. In other words, you, if, when you are really filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to be a peacemaker, not a peace breaker. Can I get a witness there? Amen. You will go from family to family, congregate to congregate, and you will spread love. You will spread joy. You will spread meekness if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Spirit is flowing from the Father and the Son. You will be caring. You will have a bondness about you, gluing each other. Just turn around and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you love them. I love you. I, I ain't talking about your spouse. Now. I said, turn your head around in your pew. I love everybody. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Donna. But God, hold on. She said, I love everybody. Somebody give up. with the Holy Ghost. Nobody can't get within five foot of you. <laughs> you fake. You talking about you talking about you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost and all these gifts flowing up through your through your life and somebody walks by you and you we're gonna talk about lately Miss Miss Rhonda I can't stand with you. Can I get a, I can't stand with you. <laughs> Watch out back there now. <laughs> Somebody give that girl some rope to us. <laughs> the Spirit seeks to reproduce the love of God in the world. Do, do, do you know what this world needs? It needs love. The world is broke. The world is hurt. Don't break the world over. People are broken. People are messy. People bothering. Shambles! Don't make their life more broken. When they come here, you know I tell everybody, this, and this bet, this bet be true of this congregation. When people come in here, you don't be getting all in the middle. Where did you come from? Y'all have a split over there. You do that, I play the. <laughs> <laughs> or the hairs on my neck just stood up, and I thought about that. Like old dog. Shows the love. We are supposed to reproduce the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. We are reproducing. If Christ was the love of God in the flesh, and Christ supposedly lives in us, then we should extrude love out of us. Amen. Honey, I don't care where you came from, or where you used to work. 
go to church, bad, it's bad theology to think that light and dark can dwell in the same place. Amen. Amen. It's not going to happen. Amen. When I lived there in St. Charles, I had, I had the most delicious green apple tree. I mean, if you did, I used to ride that thing on my lawnmower, and I put one off, and it was a, it was like a big summer balloon. So it was, man, that thing was awesome. And you and you had to bite it on the side of the lawnmower like this. If you bit it, if you bit it, your shirt's gonna be baptized in apple juice. I mean, that thing, well, that thing was so awesome. But I went out there one day, and I don't, I still don't know why. I went out there one day, and half the tree was alive, and half was dead. I, I guess I hadn't been out there in a while. And the Lord gave me a sermon that had many years ago. How many of you remember that sermon? A long, long time ago. Probably like 15 years ago now. And the Lord revealed to me, he said, one's going to win. It's either going to stop bearing fruit or it's going to bear fruit and take the other one over. And he said, Christian's lives are the same way. Many of them are half dead, half fruit. Let me tell you something. One of them is going to take over your life. One of them is going to swallow up the other one. And unfortunately, death did take that tree. Unfortunately. I almost cried when that tree died. And that thing put out the best apples there was I've ever eaten in my life. They were green, but they were so sweet. Listen, quit, quit being half a dead, half life. Let me tell you something. Love will make the tree of your life come back. Come on, somebody. here before. What in the world is that? Perry Coercis. You remember Perry Coercis, don't you? <laughs> it's just a theory about the Trinity. That's all it is. They just use big words. Brother Tim, why can't they just say Trinity? I've always thought that about theologians. The theory is that you have God Father, Son. I mean, God and Father, God and Son, God the Holy Ghost. And if you could picture them in a circle. And the Holy Spirit's the bond of love. Remember that now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read that three hundred page document again? <laughs> <laughs> the theory goes that they do a beautiful dance. And they're spinning. And they're enjoying it. One another's fellowship. You, you understand what I'm saying? In between them, as they dance and celebrate one another, there's these little gaps. Like if we had three of us arm to arm, there would be a gap between us. And they're sharing the love, and it's flowing, and it's moving, and it's dynamic. And they're sharing each other's thoughts because they're all three one. And then when we get saved, we get tucked into all the little spaces in between them. I'm not saying that, but it's a beautiful picture. What? Oh boy. I might not be sweating through my suits. I might be slobbering them up. <laughs> the idea was not that that's biblical. The idea is that the three are very close and they love one another and they care about one another. And he just likened it to a beautiful day. And they're dancing and they're going or spinning around and around and around. And he said, when we get born again, we get tucked in the middle. And we get tucked under right here under the hands. And we get tucked all in between. In other words, we get to experience the fullness of the Trinity. That's Trinitarian love. Come on, somebody. Isn't that a beautiful, isn't that a, isn't that a beautiful example? Let's call it Perry Corvorsis. For those of you that don't believe it. Thank you, sir. But those of you that don't believe it, um, don't believe it. Uh, just see, and I'll give you some literature. How about that? 
All right, let's get ready to wrap it up. Y'all ready for the picture to wrap it up? I got a class to teach in a little while, so I got to start wrapping it up. I'll skip that for you. Aaron, let's go to 1 John 4, 7. Then it's kind of confusing, right? Aaron, I got, I got 7, 8, then I got 11, then I got 18. Just take your time to work through this. <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another, for God is a love. Watch this. And everyone that loveth is born of God. See right here, Aaron. And, watch this. Everyone that is born of God. For God is for, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. In other words, everyone that is born of God is having a parent course this moment. We're gathered in with him, we're between them, and we can hear their thoughts, and we can feel the dynamic, the dynamics of their love. And he knows God. Verse number eight, watch this. Here's the other hand. He that loveth not. No, it's not God. You can't love. You don't tell. I'm telling you, brother and sister, you don't know God. Watch this. For God is. If somebody ever asks you, "What is? Who is God? What is?" It? Say, God is love. Think, think, look, look at that last statement. God, brother Jimmy, brother Jimmy, <laughs> is love. In other words, God cannot be separated from love. He cannot. And not do it. That's why he can judge holy because he's pure love. This is why he can send people to hell with a good conscience because he's full of holy, unbridled, pure life and love. And that's the way you should be. Ain't that what John is saying here? Verse 11, Aaron. She used to get hollowed like that. <laughs> First John 4, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. That's plain as a nose on your face. Verse 18, you're going to close up. First John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. How can I fear if I'm tucked in between the Father and the Son and I'm completely enamored with them? How can I fear? Can I share a little small testimony with you as we close up? <clears throat> Shan was busy for a month. Every time she would blink her eyes, she would see a flash of light. She couldn't watch TV because the TV was doing like this. And she couldn't drive. She tried to drive and she said, everything started spinning. I said, you should have pulled over. I could have got you. We called a record and got for your life. You mean just would have got you? I wonder if I've told my girl this or not. But I'm too late now. <laughs> but my mama passed away. That's the same thing happened to my mama. Every time she blinks, she see a flash of light. My mama had a headache right here. She had a headache right there. <coughs> Mama's okay now. Every time Mama tried to drive, she said, oh, it felt like the whole world was spinning around. She had a hard time making sense. I don't know what was going on, but she ain't had a hard time making sense. Said, don't you know the devil trying to get in my head? So I took your mama and I take your shame to She's the first lady. She shouldn't be suffering like this. She said, you go carry her to the doctor and she's going to have an MRI and a CT scan just like your mama. It's going to be a big old glioblastoma tumor right there. It was right where my mama's was at. I struggled, but I ain't gonna lie. I trembled. I said, nope. I said, a lie. The devil is a lie. Somebody said, the devil is a lie. I said, the devil is a lie. One day I was fishing in the watery river. And I pulled over. And there was a big old giant river birch. This river birch must go out over that water. Almost as wide as this room. It's on the left down there where you can see the I'll show you how we go there. I pulled up on that thing, I dropped my anchor. The bird was chirping. I looked up and I saw an eagle. I said, man, that's amazing. 
Y'all missing it. Y'all don't even get out the door. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. I carried, I carried uh, Mama, I carried uh, uh, Shannon and, and Jessica the other day and saw, we saw uh, two weeks. Yeah. Amazing. Big old white feather tail. You ever seen one of them? Amazing. So, when I pulled that boat over, I dropped my anchor. I closed my eyes. This is what I said, John. I said, there's no fear in love. I said, my wife's a godly woman. She's been through a difficult time. I said, I love you. I took in with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. And I said, I refuse to fear. I said, I trust you. I have a complete peace with you. And I know you have her best interest in mind, and my best interest in mind. I think it was two days later when we had a CT scan. They said, nothing. The brain's normal. Yeah. trying his best. Like every footstep I heard coming to the door, I said, there's a report. I said, I trust you. I said, I'm going to practice what I preach. I said, I trust you. Miss Tina, I said, I'm, being st I'm going to be still. And I know that he's God. And I put my feet on him. There is no fear in love. Now that's what that scripture means. I just used Shannon's illustration. There is no fear in love. See, when you're full of love, you won't fear. Come on, somebody. Anything can happen to you when you love, but perfect love casts about fear. Because fear hath told you. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Come on back, musicians. We will close with this. Gospel of John, as Tim and Rex have learned over the last couple of months, is John the Younger. Is, is the John that wrote 1 John, is that the same John? Yes, it's the same John. He's called John the Elder. Right? Mm -hmm. right? That's what you learned? You did learn that? Mm -hmm. That gave him all our time. Boy, I appreciate that man right there. He has no clue. <clears throat> so the elder John is much older than his years. He's about to pass away. He's recollecting his relationship with Christ and he's scribing down. He's writing out literally the gospel of John in, in first second. And he's given us these powerful words. He's saying that when you get saved, you, you have to have love. Love conquers a multitude of sins. Love is forbearing. Love is not puffed up. You know? Mm -hmm. So if I could leave you with anything, I want to leave you with this. There are two kinds of love that John talks about. You've heard me preach this here too. Number one is earthly, and number two is heavenly. Let us love one another. Relational and horizontal, side to side, heavenly. God, who is love? Vertical. Up and down. See, God loved us first, vertically. Up and down. When the love comes into us whenever we're born again, then that love becomes earthly, horizontal, side to side. I want you to love each other. I want you to grab one of your neighbors by your hand. And I want you to go over there and pray with them. And I want you to find somebody before we dismiss, just for a few moments. Not somebody you normally pray with either. I want you to go to somebody and I want you to hug them and tell them you love them. I want you to tell them some nice things about them. I want you to tell them I appreciate the way you work for it. I appreciate your church attendance. I appreciate the way, I appreciate the way you give. I appreciate the way you do this. Do it. Go. Go love each other. Go love on each other. Everybody, I appreciate you.